Hello, and welcome to this webinar on how to increase your pharmacy revenue by optimizing your expired pharmaceutical returns process. My name is Adrienne Vandergriff. I've served as the Director of Sales at Return Solutions for over 12 years, and we've been working with AAP since its inception, and prior to that with API, United Drug, and PIPCO for several years. I know that returns are generally back of mind when it comes to the operation of your pharmacy and thinking of ways to increase cash flow, but with the proper process in place, you can remove the headache generally associated with expired products. In addition, you can receive an injection of cash from your returns that can be used for a variety of items, including staff payroll, rent, insurance, or marketing. First, the big question, why worry about expired pharmaceuticals? Most pharmacy owners generally deal with expired goods on an as-needed basis. While it may seem adequate to only do a return when you have run out of room for the totes of expired products your staff has pulled from your shelves, today I want to talk about why you should implement a regular return schedule to avoid losing money as well as to remain in compliance with DEA and State Board of Pharmacy regulations. As you are all painfully aware, independent pharmacies are experiencing a reduction in overall profitability. According to the 2019 NCPA Digest, profitability is down from a high in 2010 of 24% to 21.8% in 2018, with increasing payroll expenses. DIR fees, reduced reimbursements, mandatory mail order, and preferred networks are all contributing to this reduction, and as a pharmacy owner, you must make up the gap somewhere. By optimizing your inventory management and expired product return processes, you can start to add much needed cash back into your pharmacy. By effectively managing your expired pharmaceutical returns, you can receive bonus injections of cash into your pharmacy throughout the year that can be used to pay for unexpected expenses, fund a community sponsorship, invest in store improvements, or any number of things that credit through your wholesaler can't cover. The data from the last 12 months shows that Return Solutions customers average $6,500 in returnable product value per return, and on average do three returns per year, for a total of almost $20,000 in returnable credit value annually. With our process, most of this credit is issued in a single check to your pharmacy rather than credit to your wholesale account. And you can receive the check in as few as 10 days or 90 days at the longest with our most economical option. Now let's talk about evaluating your processes for dealing with expired pharmaceuticals. There are a few different approaches to handling your expired drugs, each with pros and cons. The three approaches we'll discuss today are ignore your expired drugs until you're forced to deal with them, use your wholesaler program, or use an independent returns company of your choosing. Option one, ignore your expired products. You may be thinking, of course I don't ignore my expired drugs. I don't mean that you have products from 10 years ago on your shelves, although we have found some very old products in pharmacy basements and back rooms. One of our reps once found a Lilly product that expired in 1967, but let's hope you've done returns more recently in your store. If you're having your staff place expired drugs they find in totes and saving them until a certain number of totes are full or until you don't have space, you would fall into this category. The same goes for only doing returns on an annual basis or when you have a summer intern who has time to finally tackle the project. Manufacturers have rules about how much time can pass after a product expires before they will no longer issue credit, and their rules are only getting more stringent. Most will only issue credit for items that expired within the last six months, so if you're doing returns less often than that, there's a chance you're missing out on some credit that you could have received. Option two seems like a no-brainer. You purchase your stock from your wholesaler, you send back unopened items with more than six months dating to them, so why wouldn't you use the expired pharmaceutical return program they're offering? 
Chances are your rep is encouraging you to use this service when they visit your store and for good reason. The fees are astronomical and the wholesaler gets a cut. Cardinal offers two options for expired drug returns and both incur fees of 20%. You receive wholesaler credit if you use one provider and a check with the other. The promotional material states that you receive 80% of your returnable product credit within 60 days of your service, which means that they keep 20% of your returnable product value. For comparison, the Return Solutions 60-day mail-in program has a fee of 12.4%. If you're averaging around $20,000 per year in returnable credit, the savings using our service versus the Cardinal program would mean you receive over $2,500 more per year due to the difference in fees. You could also choose our 10-day pay program and receive a check for your credit in just 10 days still at a lower rate than the Cardinal program charges. The takeaway from this, it may seem like an easy solution, but you're leaving cash on the table by not evaluating all available options. Option three requires a little more legwork on your end, but you can reap the rewards of easy credit reconciliation, cash payment, and lower fees by doing your research and choosing a reputable independent returns company. Independent returns companies generally focus primarily on expired pharmaceutical returns, so are experts at obtaining the most credit possible for your items, offer comprehensive reporting, and can customize services to your needs. The rates are generally much lower than programs offered by wholesalers. It's important to make sure that you're properly vetting the company that you choose or relying on recommendations from trusted industry partners like AAP. As with every industry, there are some returns companies that claim to offer you the world, incredibly low rates, fast payment, or more credit than other companies, but then fail to deliver. I always advise someone who is considering one of these companies to thoroughly evaluate what they're actually offering. Do they offer a low rate, but have added fees for processing controls or destroying non-returnable items? These can add up quickly to an effective rate that's much higher than they originally advertised. Also, how is your credit issued? Is all credit issued directly from the manufacturer or sent by the company in rolling checks as the manufacturer issues credit? This makes reconciling your return extremely difficult. Some manufacturers take years to issue credit, so you may have long ago closed the book on a return but have still not received all credit promised. So how do you know if your current returns process is optimized to provide the most credit and least hassle for your pharmacy? There are a few key indicators you can use to evaluate your process's performance. Some easy ways to evaluate your process include analyzing how much time staff spends on returns, what percentage of your items are non-returnable, and what percentage of non-returnable items were preventable by your staff. The first indicator to evaluate is how much time your staff spends on returns. In any pharmacy, it's difficult and time-consuming to go through every shelf, refrigerator, and controls cabinet, look at every bottle or container, and pull the outdated and short-dated items. If you're using a mail-in return process, is your staff spending adequate time looking for expired products, or are they just pulling them when they happen to see them? If they aren't dedicating time to thoroughly scanning the shelves for outdates, an expensive drug could be missed and go too far out of date to receive credit. How long does it take them to complete a return with your returns company's mail-in process? Return Solutions mail-in process is online and we only require that you inventory your controls. Your items can be scanned in and most NDCs entered will be recognized and the drug information automatically populated. All you have to do is enter the quantity, lot number, and expiration date. Once you're done with your inventory, you can print a return authorization form and prepaid UPS shipping labels, and then you're done. If you have a larger or higher volume store, could your staff's time be better spent on patient care or other tasks? 
If you calculate the average time your staff spends on returns and multiply that by their hourly rate, you may find it's more economical to use an on-site return service where the company's representative scans your shelves for items and takes care of the return process for you. The Return Solutions on-site service fee is only $25 more for every $1,000 in returnable product than our mail-in service. The rep only needs a small space to work in and he'll spend several hours going through all prescription areas to find your short dated and outdated items. He enters all items into our proprietary valuation software and provides you with a complete return inventory and estimate the day of your service. Your items will be carefully packaged and pickup will be arranged for the next business day. Your staff's time is saved for more critical tasks and you have peace of mind that all expired products were removed from your store. Finally, after your return has been completed, does it take an excessive amount of time and tracking for you or your staff to figure out if you've received your credit? Do credits come in from all different sources and leave you trying to figure out what return they correspond to? With Return Solutions One Check Select program, the majority of credit is issued in one check with manufacturer credit values listed on the check stub. This eliminates the need to track credits from most manufacturers, saving you time and money. I mentioned our two service options a moment ago, but here is an overview of both. Our regional reps are all extensively trained and most have been with us for 10 years or more. If you choose our on-site service, your rep becomes a partner in maximizing your returnable credit. Because they receive commission on the value of your return, they have a vested interest in getting you the most credit possible. We consistently find that returnable product values from on-site customers are higher than those from mail-in customers, generally because the returns are done more thoroughly and on a more regular basis than mail-in returns. Our reps look at manufacturer policies day in and day out, so they are familiar with peculiar, peculiar policies and can pull an item off the shelf to get you credit now. If, for example, a generic drug is coming out and the branded item manufacturer will accept returns up to six months in date. That manufacturer may later change their policy, so if you get credit now, you avoid the possibility of losing money down the road. Our reps are taking every precaution during this time, wearing masks and gloves, frequently washing their hands, and maintaining a safe distance from your staff so you can be confident that they are not putting your staff or customers at risk. Although our customers who use our on-site service love it, we know that mail-in service may be more appropriate for some stores. We have tried to make our mail-in process as intuitive and simple as we possibly can. If you have scheduled two items, you can inventory them with your other controls, and when your return is submitted to us, we generate and mail a DEA 222 form to you the same day. You can package controls and non-controls together, and you can give your packages to any UPS driver. As soon as your return is processed at our warehouse, your inventory and credit estimate is available online. The second indicator to look at when evaluating your returns process should lie within the reporting provided by your returns company. What percentage of expired products are not returnable for credit and what are the reasons that they were not returnable? Are there changes you can make to reduce the amount you're losing in non-returnable products? Your reverse distributor should offer suggestions to reduce products expiring on your shelves in general and to minimize non-returnable items. With Return Solutions extensive reporting, you can easily view the breakdown of returnable versus non-returnable percentage of dollar value, as well as re non-returnable reasons by percentage of total dollar value. If you choose our on-site service, our reps consult with you one-on-one -on -one after your service to discuss any trends they've noticed and make purchasing recommendations. First, let's talk about ways to minimize your expiring products in general. There are four main tactics to reduce the amount of product expiring on your shelves, including improving patient adherence, putting processes in place so you know what inventory is in your store at any given time, rotating your stock to ensure products have as much time left as possible before expiration, 
and analyzing your return reports and adjusting purchasing accordingly. A great way to reduce expired products is to improve patient adherence. If you had purchased an item because it was prescribed to one of your patients, then they fill their prescription once and never come back for a refill, that drug may sit on your shelf until it expires. If you make an effort to ensure that patient refills their medication when appropriate, you can decrease the likelihood of it going out of date. According to NCPA, 82% of healthcare spend is on chronic disease, but only half of these patients take medications appropriately, so adherence is obviously a huge issue. The first way to improve adherence is to educate your patients. Prepare them for all potential outcomes while taking the drug, feeling better, feeling worse, or feeling no change, and let them know that it's important to continue taking it as prescribed for it to have a positive impact on their condition. Take time to explain their condition and how the drug works so they have a better understanding of the way that it's helping them. Next, be sure to nurture your relationships with your patients. If you've recently filled a new medication for them and they're back in your store, ask them how it's working to engage them in conversation. These small efforts can lead to a patient opening up about questions and concerns and building trust. It's also important to take a moment to look at a patient's profile when they're refilling a prescription. Are there other prescriptions they've decided not to refill? If so, ask if they'd like to refill those at the same time, and if they decline, use the opportunity to have a conversation with them about why they're making that decision. Many patients benefit from available support tools ranging from reminder apps to simple daily pill boxes or compliance packaging to help patients on complex drug regimens. Ask questions about their preferences in order to best recommend a solution that suits them. You can also coordinate all medication refills for patients to pick up at the same time each month with advantages for both your inventory management and your patients. This creates more opportunities for counseling through improved time management and decreases the likelihood that the patient will have an interruption to their therapy. Finally, take advantage of available MTM platforms and tools available within your pharmacy management software. Some have reporting or ways to highlight non-adhering patients so you can address the issue at your next interaction. The second way to minimize expired products is to have a robust system in place to keep track of your inventory. This starts with an annual physical inventory so you know what you have on hand. Appoint someone to manage this and use your inventory software to support your inventory process. Utilize the reporting tools provided by your pharmacy software system to identify items that you haven't dispensed in a certain amount of time. You can then return those unopened drugs to your wholesaler or sell open bottles on a drug exchange marketplace. You should also adjust your inventory system's parameters to handle seasonal demand changes for prescription cold and flu or allergy medications. If your system is set to keep a certain amount of these products stocked, adjust down toward the end of the season and up again before the season begins. If you know that a generic drug is coming out, be sure to adjust automatic reordering of the branded medication. Finally, don't stock uncommon or expensive items. Take advantage of next day delivery from your wholesaler if you have patients that need these items and ask them to give you advance notice so you can have them as needed. One of the most effective ways to minimize expired products is to rotate your stock. Conduct a regular review of your products and note any that are unopened and nearing expiration. Set an expectation with your staff to be constantly aware of expiration dates and to note when they encounter items that expire within the year. Most wholesalers will accept unopened items with at least six months of dating remaining, so replace the item that is near expiration with one that has a longer shelf life. If you have opened items nearing expiration and you aren't dispensing them regularly, consider trying to sell them on an overstock marketplace rather than waiting for them to go out of date. When you receive orders from your distributor, make it a habit to check the expiration date to ensure you have adequate time to dispense it before it goes out of date. 
Finally, be sure to utilize the reporting capabilities offered by your returns provider. A quality returns company will offer you detailed reports listing non-returnable items down to the NDC level with the reason that item was not returnable for credit. You can use these reports to adjust your purchasing habits in the future. Take note of which products are sold on a non-returnable basis, the manufacturers that don't accept returns at all, and which manufacturers don't accept partial items. If possible, avoid purchasing products sold as non-returnable and choose different manufacturers for future orders or reduce stock from those manufacturers with poor return policies. The last indicator of your return process's performance is to determine what percentage of non-returnable items were caused by a preventable issue. There are several reasons manufacturers deny credit that are preventable at the pharmacy level. First, items that aren't returned in a timely manner after expiration can go too far out of date to receive credit. Most manufacturers will only issue credit for items returned within six months to a year after expiration. If your shelves aren't thoroughly searched for outdated items, this can cause losses of thousands of dollars of credit. Always remember to check your refrigerated items and the area where controls are stored as well, so you don't miss any items in those locations. Another leading cause of credit denial is a damaged product or label. If your staff marks bottles with an X, be sure that they do not write on the label as this can cause manufacturers to deny credit. We recommend using removable stickers on the bottle, not the label, or marking the caps. If you have an item that was dispensed in the original manufacturer's container but was never picked up, you must carefully remove the prescription label or the manufacturer will not issue credit. If the item is not in the original packaging, the manufacturer will not accept it, so avoid repackaging items until you're sure the prescription will be picked up. Manufacturers also deny credit if they don't accept partials and a full bottle is returned with a broken seal, so avoid opening items until you're certain you need to do so. Information on reasons why credit was denied for items on previous returns should be easily accessible on your re reverse distributor's website or reports provided to you. Take a few minutes to look through your last few returns and see if there are policies you can put in place to avoid having non-returnable items that are preventable. Some best practices to minimize your non-returnable products include ordering smaller quantity bottles of products that don't have a high turnover rather than the economy size. If you must mark on or sticker bottles, avoid the label. You can mark on the actual bottle, but the manufacturer will deny credit if the label is in any way defaced. Be sure to do regular returns. We recommend mail-in returns use a quarterly schedule and on-site services be performed every six months. If you do a mail-in return, be sure you're thoroughly scanning your shelves each time. Wait to apply prescription labels to manufacturer containers until pickup. If you have two unopened bottles of the same drug and need to fill a prescription, open the one that has more dating on it. Manufacturers are more likely to issue credit for full items than for partial items. And finally, don't open a new bottle until the other one is completely empty. Now let's move on to evaluating your current returns provider. There are several ways to evaluate the performance of your chosen vendor. The main benchmarks of returns providers are how quickly your items are processed, how quickly you are paid, and what percentage of your estimated return value did you actually receive. The first indicator of your reverse distributor's performance is how quickly your items are processed and you receive the estimate of your expected return value. Return Solutions on-site option provides your credit estimate the day of your service and within 24 to 48 hours of receipt of your mail-in return packages, your estimate is available online. Why is this important? A shorter processing time gives you peace of mind that values have been accurately calculated and gives you an idea of how much credit you can expect. 
If returns sit in a warehouse for a long time after being received, there is a higher likelihood that items will go too far out of date to receive credit and you will miss out on money that you should have received. It also delays the receipt of your credit, prolonging the reconciliation process. You should aim for a returns provider with a processing time of less than five business days. This ensures you receive the maximum credit possible. The second and arguably most important indicator of a reverse distributor's performance is how quickly you are paid and how your credit is issued. Are you waiting for months or years to receive the majority of your credit? Does it come in small chunks at a time? This can lead to lapses in properly documenting what you've received and you end up never knowing if the return has been closed out and you've received all credit due to you. If you choose a provider that has a faster payment option and consolidates credit into one or just a few checks, it's much more likely that you will be able to keep track of the credit you're owed. It's easy to lose track of credits when they come one at a time as wholesaler credit or manufacturer checks or as a series of several checks from the returns company. Take stock of how much time you're spending receiving and documenting those items to see if your provider's process is truly a good value. Finally, are there additional fees deducted from your payments or do you receive an invoice that you must pay before you've actually received your credit? This can make the effective rate much higher than what companies advertise. If a company offers a low rate, but charges per pound for destruction of non-returnable items, adds shipping costs, or has a fee for issuing a 222 form, add those on to the percentage they're charging to determine the rate you are actually paying. Return Solutions consolidates most credit into one check, and we offer options to receive it in as few as 10 days or up to 90 days at the longest. Our all-inclusive fee is deducted from that check, so you're not paying upfront and the fee is taken out of what you are actually receiving. Finally, does the actual credit you receive match up to the estimate that was originally provided? If a company is consistently valuing products higher than the value you end up receiving, they're likely charging you based on their estimate and you're paying more than you should. The process of reconciling what you receive versus the estimate should be simple so you can easily compare the values. Your returns company should list these values prominently where you can easily access the details. Return Solutions lists credit value right on the check stub so you can compare easily with our estimate as well as in all reporting on our website. Historically, our estimates have been within 2% of the actual credit received and if you receive a credit from a manufacturer outside of our check that comes in lower than our estimate, we will happily reimburse the difference in our fee. So you can be sure you're never paying more than we advertise. Throughout this presentation, I've discussed some of the benefits of choosing return solutions to take care of your expired product returns. But to summarize why we believe that our service offers the best value available, we provide the simplest and fastest credit reimbursement in the industry. With our One Check Select program, you receive your credit quickly. You can choose our 10-day, 30-day, 60-day, or 90-day check option. Each time frame has a corresponding rate, so you effectively choose your rate by choosing your reimbursement time frame. We consolidate all credit due through this program which is generally about 85% of total credit dollar value into a single check issued directly to you within your chosen timeframe. The manufacturer credits included are listed on the check stub and any credits that will be issued directly from the manufacturer are listed here as well, so you know that they are coming separately. Return Solutions has no additional charges for shipping, controls processing, or destruction of non-returnable items. The all-inclusive fee is deducted from the check we issue to you, so there are no surprises. Our rates start at 9.4% for our mail-in program or 11.9% for our on-site program with 90-day payment. We also offer industry-leading reporting down to the NDC level for both returnable and non-returnable items. You can view your entire returns history on our website, 
track historical returnable versus non-returnable values, see reasons items were not returnable, and enter any credits received outside of our check. We allow you to view all checks previously issued to you, as well as controlled substance reports in case of an audit, and all data is exportable to Excel. A little bit about us. We were founded almost 30 years ago in 1992, and we remain privately owned and operated. We pride ourselves on specializing in independent pharmacies and regional chains. In fact, over 90% of our customers are independents. Return Solutions is recommended by over 25 independent pharmacy buying groups, and we have worked with AAP since its inception. Prior to AAP's founding, we worked with API, United Drug, and PIPCO for many years. In 2019, we processed almost $100 million of expired product. That money goes directly into the hands of our customers. In addition to our expired pharmaceutical return service, we also offer turnkey consumer medication collection designed for independent pharmacies. The goal when designing the service was to eliminate the upfront cost barrier to providing medication collection for your community. You can get started with the MedCollect service for under $85 a month with your AAP discount. This gets you a 15 gallon collection cabinet that's yours at the end of your agreement and 12 collection kits over a three year period. Our collection kits come with everything you need for compliant collection and disposal including packaging and the ability to print a prepaid shipping label that sends your full box directly to the incineration facility for destruction. Our website provides full reporting and everything is compliant with DEA and DOT requirements. We offer several options so you can customize your plan to your pharmacy and community needs. We have two sizes of collection kits available in 15 gallon and 40 gallon capacities as well as the option to choose how many collection kits you receive with your plan. If you use your kits before your agreement is over, you can always purchase individual kits. If you don't use them all, they're also yours to keep. Offering medication collection in your pharmacy is a critical service to your community. You can drive traffic to your store, keep your community safe, and help protect the environment by installing a collection cabinet in your store. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for joining and listening. If you have any questions or if you'd like to get started, please visit our website at drugreturns.com or call or email us. I hope this has been informative and we hope to work with you in the future. Have a great rest of the day and thanks again. Goodbye.